Within my 27 years of life, I don't think I've ever seen someone so hateful towards men like Jay Hanna. Now, if you have no idea who Jay Hanna is, you wouldn't be in the wrong because a lot of people don't know who she is. But Jay Hanna is a 25 year old streamer and Valorant gamer who has a platform on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. It has been over a month since she got a huge amount of online attention for being a misandrous. But even with that, she still hasn't gained a huge following, even after all of that buzz. Jayhanna's Twitch and Twitter bio says, always focused on inspiring and empowering women in competitive gaming. But to be honest, I think her bio should say, I try to make content empowering women, but I didn't feel like patiently waiting to gain a following for being a good person who actually uplifts women. So I tried going viral by calling men out instead. When this all backfired on me and all of the skeletons came out of my closet, I tried becoming a grifter in a last ditch effort for clout. This also crashed and burned and now I'm a walking meme. Now I think that's a little bit too lengthy for a bio and it might pass the word limit, but I still stand with that bio. On May 16th, 2024, Jayhanna tweeted, men are the problem with the gaming community and attached this video from her TikTok. She wouldn't last 10 minutes in a COD lobby is not, nor has it ever been a valid excuse for men to act like pieces of human garbage in gaming. I shouldn't have to play a game where all I say is hi and the whole game is thrown and I'm in hell for the next 40 minutes because men are being emotional about it. That is not normal and that's not how the old COD days were because I promise you, as a man, you have never had somebody throw on the basis of your gender. That doesn't happen. You can say it happens. You're lying. I'm sorry. I don't know why that's such a common thing in the comments of my videos. You guys want to be oppressed so bad that you'll look at a man calling me a b telling me he's going to tell me to get back in the kitchen and say it's not a woman thing and say that that happens to you too. It doesn't. There's a reason that historically male dominated spaces are known for being toxic and unsafe. That goes for gaming, that goes for sports. Any male dominated space is a bad one. That's not me being sexist. That is me saying there is an inherent issue with the way that you guys have your locker room talk that makes everybody else feel unsafe. I don't know how you could possibly find it fun to make other people feel unsafe. No woman is asking men to make gaming a safe space with sunshine and rainbows and everything, but could you please be normal? Because I want to be able to enjoy playing the game without my life being threatened, without my body being threatened, because I'm existing as a woman. And men are the ones making it unsafe. And I do not care if you feel targeted by me saying men, or if you feel attacked by me saying men, you are part of the problem. If you feel attacked by that, you're part of the problem. If you say just mute them, you're part of the problem. If you sit there and let them say that to me and you don't intervene, you are part of the problem. Because I have a lot of male friends, normal male friends, who don't say slurs and don't threaten people and just play like normal. I understand it, it's not all men. But if you are not one of the men doing this, it is entirely on you to help stop the men who are. If you don't understand that and you don't understand power imbalances and gender hierarchy, it's not my place to teach you. I'm not your mother, I'm not your teacher. Close the game for five minutes and educate yourself, but stop making this a bad experience for everybody else who's just trying to play the game. A lot of people thought she was being overly sensitive and said trash talk is just a part of gaming, which kind of it kind of is. But she actually had a lot of support on her video over on TikTok. Just look at these crazy comments. Bro, I'm a guy with a high pitched voice and I've talked in Val lobbies and gotten called slurs and gotten creeped on by guys just because they thought I was a girl. I don't talk in the game anymore. Thanks for sharing your experience and standing in solidarity with women. Ignore the trolls. That sucks, dude, and 1000% understandable. I don't use my mic unless I hear a female or a friendly person's voice. The gaming community really needs to step up and be better. I don't understand the point in being a jerk to your own teammate for no reason. I have like 140 people blocked on Fortnite because of it, but I think my lobbies are better now. Plus, I go out of my way to chat with other chill folks online, plus add them. Now, as you could see by the top comment thread on her TikTok, Jay Hanna was getting a lot of support from other gamers and had the potential to build a positive, empowering community moving forward. Even on Twitter, she was getting some positive feedback. But for the majority of the gaming community on Twitter, this video was enough to make them hate her before any of her misandrous comments resurfaced. A gamer and artist named Madam Savvy quote tweeted Jay Hanna and wrote, I'm going to stop you right there. You can't use the word everyone when not everyone agrees. I've never in my life felt unsafe from video game banter. No mentally mature individual individual has. Y'all are trying really hard to make this a problem and it's not. You even give the get in the kitchen example in the same breath as a R word comment, which shows even you don't take it seriously. If you felt unsafe, you wouldn't dare put the kitchen comment on the same line as a R word comment. People genuinely fearful wouldn't crack a weak line like that. Again, banter back or mute it, report it and move on. 
Dudes say they'll R word each other all the time in games. Welcome to Equality. It's been going on since the first voice comms. Heck, the earliest days of trash talk was cry more. Truth is, you are the problem with this space. However, I encourage you and your type to go make your own games, your own lobbies and rules, and have fun. But after this tweet, things took a huge turn. On March 17th, 2024, the very next day after Jayhanna's Men Are The Problem video, someone quote tweeted her video with a clip of her on stream. They wrote, what a disgusting individual you are. And it got 82,000 likes. After watching the stream clip they attached, please, if you have any idea how this ties into her mission statement of being always focused on inspiring and empowering women in competitive gaming, please inform me in the comments down below. No, it's over, Ina. It's over. Like, if if I were to have a boy, we better pray to God that he's gay. We better start indoctrinating him day one. We have to either make him trans or make him gay. We are not having a cisgender straight son. Once this clip resurfaced on Twitter, almost the entire gaming community, whether they were men or women, turned on Jay Hanna. Now that users had the full story about who she really was, her career was pretty much over before it even got off the ground. Now you might think Jay Hanna didn't go as far as other misandrists go, like when they say things like, if I had a baby and I found out the gender wasn't a girl, I'd just end it. But her comments opened the floodgates for these types of comments on Twitter, as people tried to defend her misandry with even more misandry. Just look at the tweets. The original tweet says, 1. If you want to be in the community, stop trying to change that community. 2. Men in gaming get targeted for everything, including their gender. Their difference is they understand it's banter and just have fun. 3. You have a mute and block button. The second original tweet says, Log off, S-word. I didn't even listen. In reply to Jay Hanna's Men Are The Problem video. Obviously, it's wrong to call her an S-word, but now here comes the misandry. The likes on these. We need to eradicate the male race. There's literally no other way. Now, as a man, these tweets really don't bother me at all because it's just a tweet and not an actual threat to the global population of men. But let's try to look at things like Jayhanna does for a second and pretend to be, oh my goodness, extremely triggered. If I went into a space dominated by women like teaching and started tweeting, we need to get rid of the entire female race. There's no other way for me to be welcomed with open arms as a male teacher. I'm pretty sure that would taint my reputation just a little bit, especially if I was trying to be a streamer online and I ended up tweeting that out. I'm not naive enough to think women have it easy in the world, and I recognize the problems for women in the gaming industry. But Jay Hanna going viral from misandry has the exact opposite effect of women empowerment and only leads to female gamers being even more disrespected. Now, male gamers will probably use the Jay Hanna situation to trash talk female gamers even more. They'll probably say things like, I see you're a gamer girl, so like, let me guess, if you had a son, you'd probably force him to be trans or gay, right? So just add the Jay Hanna jokes to all the face kitchen and the go make me sandwich jokes that already exist within the gaming culture. Now, what Jay Hanna doesn't realize is that every time a female gamer pulls a crazy stunt like this, it makes it harder and harder for women to be taken seriously, especially in the gaming industry. She claims to be always focused on inspiring and empowering women in competitive gaming, but by saying things like, I'm going to force my son to be gay, and men are the problem with the gaming industry, she's just giving the men who already don't respect female gamers more and more ammo to make fun of them. We all know the gaming industry is male dominated, and that's what Jay Hanna doesn't like. But back to the female dominated spaces example. No one in their right mind would say women are the problem with the hair salon industry. Obviously, it's wrong for the men she plays with to make R-word jokes and throw the game as soon as they notice she's a woman, but saying the things that she says doesn't help stop these things from happening one way or another. If I was trying to make all women think men aren't trash, but randomly started saying all women should be terminated and the female race should be eradicated, that would just make women hate men even more, and they would use me as an example as to why they hate men so much. It's actually pretty insane because after Jayhanna received all the backlash, on May 18th, she tried to spin the entire narrative and gaslight and manipulate people into thinking she only said those things on stream to uplift the LGBTQ community. Now honestly, this is probably the craziest manipulation tactic to try to get uncancelled I've ever seen. Now, no Jayhanna, you did not say you will force your son to be gay or trans because you love and accept gay and trans people. You said that because your mad men were trash talking you on a video game and said all cisgender men need to be done away with so there's no more trash talking in gaming. Just reading that back and thinking about that, that's honestly insane. You're saying all men deserve to be eradicated? because you were getting trash talked in a game. That's, I'll, 
I'm just gonna pause real second. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a five minute break. Five minutes later. In a last ditch effort to save her dying career, she tweeted, all the money I make from stream and across all platforms this week will be donated to the Trevor Project for LGBT youth. You are all more than welcome to keep interacting with my pages. Thanks for all your help. XO live right now. So basically, since she was mad that thousands of men on Twitter were making fun of her and angry at her comments, she accused them all of simply being homophobic and mocked them for increasing her engagement and putting more money in her pocket. And yes, in her pocket, because I doubt she actually donated to the Trevor Project with that Twitter engagement money. If she did, I'd love to see a receipt. Right after this, she tweeted, I want to let y'all know I do see all the nice messages and I appreciate everything. And I'm glad my videos resonate with you. As long as I'm around, there's always a safe place for you. Now this is all cap because she did absolutely nothing to make a safe space for female gamers. All she did was give people another example of a terrible gamer girl, just like what happened with Nadia. This just makes it harder and harder for all of the normal female gamers to be taken seriously in the gaming community. After this, Jay Hanna was banned on Twitch from May 19th to June 4th. During Jay Hanna's two week ban, every time she tried to get people on her side, it just made people hate her even more. For example, she retweeted this graphic calling Asmongold a fragile white male for calling her out. We're at this level of white male fragility. It's bad. When it's a guy getting threatened, this is a felony. Asmongold responds to Twitch streamer Denims saying she would pay $30,000 to whoever made him disappear. When it's a girl getting threatened, why can't a man have a space that they can act like this? This tweet of course got ratioed because it compares an actual death threat to gamer trash talk and also attempts to battle sexism with even more sexism. Then, in an even more ironic turn of events, Jay Hanna dropped the merch line. The sweatshirts and t-shirts said, empower women in gaming, no excuses. And apparently, 50% of profits were going to go towards supporting women in gaming. Again, being an upstanding internet personality would have done a lot more for women in gaming than all of this Twitter drama ever did. One user wrote, nah, not if you're the one leading foot in this. You have the absolute worst takes ever, politically and socially. So no, if any of my other women gaming friends want to champion this, sure, but sure as hell not you. You're a bad face for a movement. After being unbanned on June 4th, she tweeted, These last two weeks I've been banned on Twitch have been the worst weeks of my life. Just kidding. I went outside and spent time with my friends and found love in the world around me and will to live again. Now I'm about to lose it all on Valorant. Live right now, come through. I'm pretty sure the random suicide undertone of that tweet was another one of her attempts at satire. I really do wish creators would learn the difference between clickbait, rage bait, grift, sarcasm, and satire. But at this rate, it doesn't look like they ever will. On June 5th, she tried to make it seem like everything she said on stream was simply taken out of context and tweeted, the MFs trying to find any way to cancel me on Twitter last week and put a clip from Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed where Fred gets taken out of context on the news. Just like Nadia, Johanna tried to go viral and get attention by tearing men down. And we all know what happened with Nadia. She called herself the best female Warzone player and if anyone disagreed, she called them sexist. Then after her millions of attempts to prove she wasn't cheating, she was finally exposed for cheating and was banned from all Activision tournaments. Now Nadia has moved on to becoming an OnlyFans model and does a lot of other weird stuff on stream. On June 26th, Jay Hanna tried to claim that everything she said on that stream was just satire. I'm honestly just tired of creators saying the most heinous things for views and money, and then if it doesn't work out, they call it all satire. At this point, the word satire has lost all meaning. First, we have a girl faking a miscarriage and calling it satire. Now we have someone saying she'll force her son to be gay or trans and calling it satire when it doesn't work out. I don't know how many times I have to say it. When you have an online platform, it's not funny if no one besides you is in on the joke. And you can't claim satire just because you get backlash. No matter how you look at the situation, it's just all a really dumb stunt to pull. Instead of apologizing, she wants to backtrack and completely spin the narrative around what she said and did. But back to her tweet about everything being satire. In her tweet, she screenshotted this Twitter thread. To the doc defenders, please know that you're not guilty by association for previously being a fan of someone who turns out to be a bad guy. An insane amount of time slash money went into constructing his persona so you'd like him. What says more about you is if you stay a fan after this. He and Nick Merckx are bad guys when it comes to their views on the LGBTQ community as a whole. So what about when XJ Hanna was caught saying if she was to have a son that he was going to be indoctrinated to be gay or trans? Is this acceptable? Jay Hanna responded, Dr. Disrespect admits to being an actual PDF file, and yet somehow I'm worse than him because I use satire in a Twitch clip. Y'all don't care about kids at all. You just hate LGBT. But that's been obvious since day one, LMAO. 
I don't even know how she found this thread, seeing that she wasn't even tagged. I assume she searched her name and saw an opportunity to get more victim clout by drawing more attention to the thread. Jay Hanna wants to avoid all accountability by becoming the victim in this entire situation. But how are you going to convince the entire internet you are the victim after saying you'd make your son gay whether he's gay or not? Whether it was a joke or not, how is that joke funny at all? I have a feeling Johanna is currently trying to rebrand herself and move on from all of the misandry. No one thinks she's a victim, no one thinks she's empowering women, and everyone is labeling her a sexist and a GR Omer. I have to say it like that or else YouTube, you know, will come and limit the ads on the video again, just like how they do with almost every one of my videos now. So, yeah, you, you, I'll put it on the screen right now. She wants people to forget she ever said anything, but no one just forgets insane statements like hers. Now Johanna is back at square one. She'll probably try to grow her platform by actually empowering women in gaming from now on. If this doesn't work out, she'll probably go back to making fun of men here and there by showing clips of male gamers getting emotional or showing men who have terrible KD ratios, just like she was doing right before the entire misandry situation. But even if Johanna tries to be a positive creator from now on and genuinely tries to empower women, she'll forever be known for this entire stunt. Her digital footprint is already set in stone. I don't like anyone who becomes a sellout for clout, but I especially don't like people who become sellouts and then when they don't gain anything from being a sellout, they backtrack and pretend it was all satire, sarcasm, and one huge joke. Most of the women that could have made up Jay Hanna's fanbase now would never follow her. And I say this because I've seen thousands of comments about this situation like, as a woman, we don't claim her. Before trying to build a career off of saying men are the problem with the gaming community, she should have realized she's not one to talk, seeing that she said all of that crazy stuff on stream. And now, her digital footprint will make it a hundred times harder for her to build a fan base moving forward. And a lot of her streams will probably be filled with hate. But I have a really strong feeling that she doesn't care about all the hate or any views that people have of her. The only thing she cares about is the money that it draws, which is why she clipped herself doing that, and which is why she would try to say things on stream to get them clipped. But this has been why the gaming community hates Jay Hanna. Let me know what you guys all think about this entire situation in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe. I really appreciate each and every one of you for always watching, liking and commenting, and supporting my channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Out of every TikToker slash YouTuber I've spoken about on my channel, there has not been as bad of a downfall than the creator we are speaking about in today's video. The Manny Show has been getting absolutely cooked on TikTok recently, and it seems like every single time I open the TikTok app, there is another video making fun of the Manny Show, telling him to get a job or the new